everyone, another Hack Engineering video. Today we're at Nitron, which is a really, really exciting day. Patrick here is gonna give us a tour, talk through the manufacturing facilities, yep. Nitron sort of shocks as, as the various models. Yep. Um, yeah, everything that goes on here. Uh, it's really exciting because literally everything happens here in this building. Um, so without further ado, we'll start having a look around and Absolutely. you can wow us with all the magic. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pleasure to have you. Uh, I've known of Hack Engineering for a long time. Um, Good customer of ours so yeah we'll um give the people what they want yeah and a little tour around the factory thank you very much no hope worries. you enjoy it make sure you like and subscribe as well i usually get that in right at the end but i'll get it in early this time nice and uh yeah let's crack on absolutely We're actually halfway through a chat with Patrick, who's given us a little tour. So we've seen upstairs in the various sort of storerooms for little components and bits and bobs, and then we're about to move to probably the more exciting things, depending on how yeah. you're persuaded. Well, I get very excited like, about yeah, upstairs. Yeah, sounds like upstairs. <laughs> certainly looked like you were having a good time there anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna have a look at assembly and have a chat about some of the more technical yep. side of Nitron shocks, um, which are all made here, other yep. than the ones in the States, or? The Everything States? is made here, Everything and then made here. gets shipped over oh, cool. globally. So yeah, Very we've cool. done upstairs, we'll go through to production and uh, show you around cool. a bit more. Cool, all right. Technical and very clever. Cool. Um, so yeah, so this is a production room. Very cool. Um, everything that gets built here is what you see outside on the outside world. So every shop that comes through here will get built here, tested, dyno tested, quality controlled, and then shipped. And it's built from scratch. So um, yeah, every shock we've sold has been through here basically. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, from rods, they all get machined here as well. That's yeah, very so you've cool. got Some car stuff. bays, all this side. Um, so Morgan production line as well is in this bay. And then, Perhaps yeah. it's so neat. Yeah, it's very clinical. That's one of the things most people say is quite clinical in here. Yeah. Um, this is how guy dream. likes it. It yeah. also makes, as a working environment, it makes it so easy to like, just have a nice working environment yeah. to be so clean yeah. and clinical. Um, yeah, the same process for bike shocks, whether it's a twin or a single, um, everything cool. will get built, dyno tested, quality controlled and checked before it goes out the door. And then moving on down, uh, this is like more of the electron side of stuff. Oh yeah, that's pretty um, exciting, the newer. Yeah, yeah, it's all pretty go ahead. Kieran's been quite influential in <laughs> terms of that development side of things. So yeah. um, if you have any technical questions, ask him, don't ask me. <laughs> So this is the bike development bay. Got the bike development manager who you just met, um, who's going to be doing all the, the work on, on your bike here. Yeah. Been here the longest out of the whole company. Um, company started in 98, and Scott was pretty much the first employee oh, after cool. the boss. Massive, passionate bike rider himself. That's his BMW there. He oh, cool. only does track rides now, so he takes out to yeah. Portugal. So he's got a Race Pro R3 shock on there and Very cool. all the gizmos. But all the bike development is done in here. He'll book the bike in, take the bike apart, test the OE shocks on the dyno. We've got some really cool dynos in here. So we've got a CTW, which is an absolutely unreal bit of kit. Essentially you can, on a log, uh, track all your suspension settings and dampers and dynos. So if you go, go around Spa, let's say, yeah. that will replay Spa as your shock. Oh, wow, okay. Um, and oh, you can fine. see where you can make time or lose yeah. time effectively. Um, wow. So yeah, mega bit, of, mega bit of kit. Yeah, Scott basically does all the development work in here. Also in here, we've got all our 3D printers and stuff. Yeah. So we 3D print a lot of products uh, to test fit, um, <laughs> but a lot of tooling as well. So if okay. there's a, tool, a specific tool that we need to tighten or you know anything like that, then we'll 3D print it. Um, cool. And that is the bike bay. Very cool. It's quite nice to see that uh, three bikes in here, all three of BMW as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so. We bought this to literally develop the kit ourselves. Cool. Scott's bike is in here whenever he's up, uh, testing yeah. or wants to do That's something different. Quite, I mean, it's quite a nice bit of kit. kit. Yeah. yeah. I've got yeah. a 
I've got an S thousand R as well. Oh really? Um, but I actually mine is wanna, very standard compared to that. I actually want to take the throttle bodies, put them on my yes. BMW yeah. through an AI. Sorry, off topic. Yeah. Um, but Would you, I want to do a, a throttle body conversion. Because that'll be cable throttle on this. Yeah. Presumably. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's a slightly later one with drive by wire, but yeah. Um, but my idea but was yeah, to do be... a bike throttle. I, I yeah. feel like it's a more and more common conversion to do that on cars, but yeah. It makes. I mean. Makes yeah, sort of makes sense because bike engines are literally like everything <laughs> set everyone up for, for a car it, literally. engine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, in a package that's mass produced and yeah. affordable. So Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so like you were saying on your yeah, that's quite when you sit in like that. Yeah. Which is really nice. Yeah, thing. yeah very cool. So this is our service bay, so every shock that we send out has a, a form that you can then bring back um, and you can get the shop fully serviced. Cool. Um, they are warranted for three to five years, I think it is one or the other, but then you can get it serviced yearly after that and that extends your warranty. Like you're saying, it is a precision bit of kit, so it's important yeah. to keep on top of that. And like the thing, like oil does degrade over time. Yeah. Um, so we do use the highest spec oil that we can for the shop, but if you're hard on track for all your 10,000 miles a year are fully on track, yeah, your oil will degrade life. over yeah. a certain amount of time. So it's yeah. important to then send that back, get that replaced. And essentially what we do with, with, within the service is Very check cool. everything. So we'll check down to, we'll re, re the shock, pull it apart, replace anything that's broken, and then give you a, a rundown of what we've done. Um, so yeah, so like we get kits that are X amount of years old that we've sold from 10, 15 years ago. And the technology that we've now introduced into our shops has changed a lot. So yeah. The shocks that we sell 15 years ago are still absolutely brilliant, but if yeah. you don't service them, then that kind of reduces their performance. But you, you know, you service them, you replace the shim stack, you re-dyno them. You've basically got a brand new shock from from Very the get-go. Cool. So yeah. yeah, I think it's bits like that. You know, Nitron, you can get far cheaper suspension. Yep. Um, and yeah, to have something made in the UK that is serviceable. Yeah. That you, it's an investment, isn't it? Yeah. That, you know, the handling speaks for itself. Everyone knows that cars handle incredibly well on nitrons. Yeah. So it's set up properly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's actually that long term kind of ownership experience. That's I it. Guess yeah. Is, is I mean, we, we do try and use absolutely the best materials that you can physically find in the market. Mm. Um, so before any of that, we've, you know, before you've actually finished the shock, you've got all the best materials possible. Then you interject some of our special secret sauce that <laughs> people don't know about, but then yeah, yeah we filled that and we're now in the way. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a nice little bit that people might not know about, but you can get your socks, shocks, socks, you can get your socks serviced. Yeah. Very cool. So this will be like a standard R1 kit. Um, adjustable combined compression and rebound on the adjuster knob. Sometimes it's a bit different. It might be like a twizzle one on the actual shaft of the shock. Yeah, this is for a GAT2 M4, I think. Um, but yeah, so a standard R1 comes with adjustable drop links and top mounts. Yeah. So like the R1 and R3 do that. The, the both kits do that. And then the Road Sport just is a standard shock, no top mounts, because it integrates with the OEM top mounts. Yeah. Um, cool. Fully height adjustable. On lock rings and much lighter than a yeah. I just, standard I just carried shock. this through and I was like, Whoop, okay, yeah, um, yeah. I haven't, haven't. Uh, I don't know a the exact nitron shock for a while. Yeah, I don't know the exact it. weight loss, but it is significant. Yeah, yeah, and that is yeah, yeah. Well, we can we, cool. we use aluminium, um, but for like strength purposes, like the rods and stuff like that, we'll use um, stainless. But very cool. And I um, I just asked you. You uh, did. Off, off camera. What you are the did. numbers on the bottom? So the numbers on the bottom are stamp numbers. So every shock that is built will have a specific stamp code that we stamp onto the shock and then that gets put into your booklet. From there, we can see when the shock was built, who it was built by, when it was dyno tested, what it dyno tested at. So for traceability cool. purposes, so like a complete, passport, complete, to it, complete it? passport to the shock. Yeah. Very and even cool. ones from back in 98 when we first started. Cool. So 01. <laughs> so whoever has the O1 shock is pretty cool. Very but, cool. Yeah. Um, so standard R1, really good bit of kit. M more road biased than track biased, but the amount of cars that I've seen, and in fact, we spoke about this in the office earlier, 
So a friend of ours runs an R1 kit on his uh, Golf R, and he was doing 728s on R1s. Fair play. So, a, it's so a fast not limited driver. in what they can so do. So they're not limited in what they can do. <laughs> but yeah. at the same time, if you are looking for a more track-focused shock, then the R3 is absolutely the one to go for. Yeah. With that, obviously, there's a compromise of quality of ride and all that sort of stuff. But the R1, out of the box, is a phenomenal shock. Yeah, we've, we've had customers... Um, I never got to go out in the car, but Ben behind the camera did. Mm. Uh, we had a customer with an S54 E36. Nice. And I think in many ways it's a car to just try and keep simple, not get too carried away, which yeah. never works. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he just had our ones on it and that thing was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Um, yeah. They are a really, really good damper. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. It's quite nice as well. I think you know, a lot of shocks that actually only adjust rebound. Yeah. It's that, you know, Having the combined, is a genuine yeah, the combined adjustment adjustment is a easier, um, but also it really does work. Mm. Um, I think you've got, I think it's sixteen clicks, from right to left. Yeah, full hard to full soft. Yeah, so you know, for someone potentially not wanting to get too mixed up in settings. That's it. Uh, yeah, obviously it's it's set we say, to it doesn't have yeah. limitations. So from, there is a from us, it's dynoed and calibrated to a complete medium level to start dead center. And then from there you can go, yeah, clicks either way. Very cool. So R1, really good road, some track. If you want to go full track, then the R3 is absolutely the one to go for. This kit is for a 997 GT3. Mm. Um, we've done a load of development on the 997 um, in terms of electron, front axle lift, the full blown works really. Um, but yeah, so the beauty of the R3 is that you get an external reservoir either on a piggyback attached to the shock or on a hose. The hose, there's no performance difference. It's exactly the same. It's just location and ease of use for fitting. So yeah, I, yeah, I guess some cars are very much more limited in terms yeah. of space down yeah. by the Absolutely. brakes. And yeah, exactly. And so and... yeah, running a, a hose on it doesn't hinder the performance in any way, but it just gives you a bit of extra room for adjustability. This is like a seven by axis thing. So this will go any which way possible. Yeah. Um, which makes mounting easier. Makes it mount really easier. <laughs> so I've done a few with uh, mounted canisters in the, in the back of, you know, turn threes and things. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's not the easiest thing. Once it's no. in there, obviously perfect. Yeah. Um, and, and you want it to be away yeah. from the heat, ideally. But, yeah. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, how, that is a lifesaver. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice little invention that we made. Um, so the beauty about the R3 is that you've got compression and rebound separate. And then on the compression, you have high speed and low speed. And that just gives you a level of adjustment that you wouldn't have in, a, in an R1, essentially. Um, but the premise of the damper is exactly the same. Um, the only difference is the external canister. But yeah, very cool. But I mean, these are race winning kits we've installed them on all the team Sherma cars they all run a, a specific to their spec nitron r3 damper um and most recently they've done a g87 m2 that did a sub 640 yeah. or something that's even <laughs> round wing which if you know the nurburgring which probably a lot of your viewers do yeah um, is pretty so, quick yeah yeah i think um, certainly most of the most of the nitron shocks we sell end up on the Nürburgring. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, we've built a business around it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's pretty if, good. If, yeah, if Team Sherman can do things with it with nitron shocks like that, then yeah. you know, there, there's, no, there's no limit, yeah. is there really? It's, I mean, there's a, there's a lot to it as well in terms of like their kinematics and all that sort yeah. of stuff. There's a whole load of secret sauce that people probably won't ever know. But yeah. in terms of something that you can visually see, a damper is going in and making things quicker. Yeah, so. and as a, I guess as a basis as well for whatever you do end up doing with your car. That's it. I've been under a few Sherma cars and, mm. and there is loads of there's Trick trickery bits. going on there yeah. <laughs> that um, I'm sure there is a hell of a lot of maths behind. Um, and it, yeah, it's not as simple as no. bolt this on. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's very well yeah. proven that the right set of shocks are going to be the yeah. perfect basis Absolutely. For, for your setup. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, stuff like the R3, like you can drive it on the road. It really, it really can be driven on the road. Certainly for like a 907 GT3, there are already... A stiff car yeah um, so the the level of stiffness you won't really notice too much but let's say you're going from a yeah like an e92 m3 you're going to put an r3 shock on there you're going to feel the difference on the yeah. road but you will also notice a huge amount of difference in terms of your adjustability your capability on driving on track as well so yeah they're a they're a wicked bit of kit yeah yeah i think 
but based on the cars I've been in with customers on track, yeah, there's there's good shocks, and then there's like yeah, the nitron, Stop. the nitron magic. Stop. Stop. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's not all me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. I'm just the camera guy. <laughs> uh, but yeah. That's it. And then obviously you've got the road sport. Uh, I don't have an example of a road sport, so I do apologize, but it is literally essentially an R1 um, with no top mount. Yeah, yeah, which is quite nice. Um, I was saying to you before, it fits a set to a Yaris GR a while yeah. back. And it, you know, a solid top mount is perfect for performance, but um, the particular customer that I fitted these for yeah. drives across Europe quite a bit, yeah. um, you know, literally of pretty much across the whole of Europe. Yeah. Um, so just wanted to keep something that was very much just a, a subtle upgrade. But yeah. Actually, it completely transformed the car on something yeah. that's already a really well handling yeah. car. Yeah. So I think that the difference is obviously <laughs> with an R1 and an R3, you do get those extra little trick bits of top mounts and drop links. Mm. But if you are that sort of customer that loves your car, loves a drive, but actually you don't want all the faff of coilovers and all that sort of malarkey, you can do an RS kit. Um, which gives you, again, high adjustability. Um, the introduction of the Electron system into these is incredible. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I mentioned earlier, but um, using, a let's say, an Alfa Romeo Giulia as an example, we can now plug into the OEM system. You don't have to worry about top mount, you don't have to worry about the faff of the install. It is literally place in, plug in, and you've got on the button from the OEM, you've got adjustability. So Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. And then... Um, that in terms of BMWs dates back to E92. Absolutely, EDC era, systems. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. Which is so cool. Yeah. I um, I recently sold my E92 M3, which made Why? me very sad. Why did you do this? <laughs> um, but yeah, I was I was eyeing up very strongly eyeing up um some Electron yeah. suspension for it just because to be honest that car on the UK roads I generally only drove it in the softest setting, but yeah. to not kind of lose that quite a nice luxury yeah. thing that not all the cars had. Um, and just to be able to have that on a button yeah. is um, absolutely game changer. That's it, yeah. And we've developed that side of things a bit more as well in terms of our DCU, so our damper control unit. It is a completely custom built wiring loom separate to everything else that you install. Um, you, we then find and locate the best position for the box. And that's got three axis uh, accelerometers and gyroscopes in there. So it will control your dive pitch, your roll, um, and it will give feedback to the box. It will then send out the information to the shocks. Yeah. Um, so I was saying earlier, you've got like six adjustments, three not adaptive, three semi-adaptive. Um, that is a game changer. So stuff like the M uh, F87 M2 comp mm -hmm. that I don't think came with adaptive damping. No, the UK ones. I don't know about the rest, but it's only UK <laughs> yeah. ones. Yeah. Um, so that car we, we've done a load of stuff with um, and it's incredible. Mm -hmm. it, like the difference just in terms of even in the soft setting, going around the corner, instead of you like lolloping into it, it just yeah. pops you up. So you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm still super comfortable. But um, yeah, the adjustability in that is mad as well. So yeah, very cool. We'll have to dive Whole into new that. Age. Well, we'll have to dive into that another time. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> sounds good. But yeah, that's all cool. Very cool. Groovy. So that's us all wrapped up at Nitron. It's been a really interesting day. I, you know, I knew obviously who Nitron were. I know the product fairly well. We've sold them for quite a few years now. But the intricacies of some of the bits that go into the machine work um, uh, you know, within the shocks uh, has tremendous absolutely blown me away. So yeah, lots learned for myself. Hopefully if you're watching this, you've learned something too. Um, we've got more videos coming with Nitron, uh, so keep your eyes peeled for those. And the best way of make sure you don't miss them is to make sure you subscribe to our channel and also like this video if you enjoyed it. We'll catch you next time.